Calgary is a vibrant and dynamic city with a very strong metal scene. It is home to the metal band Cobra and the Lotus. We had a chance to sit down with Cobra Page of Cobra and the Lotus and ask her about, well, just about everything. In this first installment, we ask about the beginnings of the band, getting signed, touring, and much more. Um, basically, Cobra and the Lotus. I mean, how did this name come to be? This, uh, this was a journey to get to this name. It started as Lotus, actually, a uh, project about six years ago. And then um, as a new member came into the band, the name was too feminine for him, so thought Cobra would be a cool name. Um, so we put Cobra and the Lotus together in the end, actually, because we couldn't have Cobra when we wanted to copyright and trademark the name. But the Cobra and the Lotus uh, in itself, the words represent fierce beauty, which I actually think represents metal in a lot of ways because it's very intricate and there's a lot more to it than uh, people know um, if they don't listen to it. And uh, it can be very beautiful at times, but it's also, uh, it brings out the animal in people. You had the opportunity to tour through Europe before being discovered by Gene Simmons. How was the experience as an independent Canadian band and how did the tour come to be? Those tours just came to be by sheer ambition. We just started to pick up some sort of wild momentum after Metal Hammer chose me as a metal maiden actually in their 2010 calendar. And then we just started realizing that there was some kind of fan base growing over there and we thought let's go over to the UK and start working the territory and it just became uh, yeah, a very great place for us to focus on. We asked Cobra about our experience with metal fans. The amazing thing about metal that is just um, proven time and time again and I, I don't, it won't ever change, um, is the loyalty of the fans. Uh, people that love a band will love them to the end, I find. Meeting Gene Simmons, rock and roll legend. How was that whole experience like? That was crazy because at first it, we thought it was for sure a joke when we, when he contacted us in the first place. We were all, we were in the UK and um, we got an email with a phone call so we could hear it and it was a message from him and uh, we were like, <laughs> like like, who the hell is out there messing with us, you know? And then, uh, yeah, when I went to meet him, it was at Heavy Montreal Festival, and I was going to watch Kiss, and then the day after, talk to him about what his idea was and his proposal, really, for the band. And uh, so the first time I met him was uh, when he was all in, in his gear, his armor, and... He was huge and he didn't say anything to me, he just walked over and put his arm around my neck like that. And I was just like, so it begins. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, but it was great. It was so exciting. Getting signed by Gene Simmons, I mean, how actually did it come about? Well, um, actually, this is uh, something that gets confused by people all the time. We're not signed by Gene Simmons. We're actually uh, signed to Universal Canada. Universal is our mother label. Uh, but how it came about really is that uh, you, uh, Simmons Records started this Canadian division. Um, uh, I, I don't believe it was that long ago, three years or something. And uh, Mark Spickluck, the A&R representative at Universal at the time, had been keeping an eye on us. Um, he saw us at Canadian Music Week. Uh, he actually was the one that kind of pushed us. We asked him for constructive criticism, asked if he would come out and check us out during CMW, and he did, and he had some really good advice. He said we had a lot of growth to do, and we had to really uh, find our authenticity on stage and really evolve in our sound. When we had gone into the studio to record the second album, um, we uh, brought the album when, when it was finished to Mark and we said, hey, look what we've done over the last year and a bit and stuff and check this album out. And uh, 
then he really decided, I don't know, he made a decision that it was ready. He thought Gene would love this. So he took it to Gene, and Gene sparked the fire also uh, under Randy's butt, which is um, president of Universal, and that's how it came about. There's a very big difference between the sound and singing style of the first album as compared to the second. We asked how the sound evolution came about. The first time you make music, it's you need an evolution and stuff from that. You need to start somewhere. So we did. We just um, started touring massively across Canada, dragging our butts into every hole we could. Touring is so important for a band to do because you learn way more about everything even though even if you play to like two people just seeing how they're gonna respond to different things in your music that alone shows you like okay I need to stay authentic with the music I like but this is how I need to change the sound to make it more appeasing to these people you know becoming more comfortable in on stage um, I actually uh, used to be, well, I still consider myself shy, but I've worked really hard on it. And in the beginning, I was really terrified of playing and stuff and um, being on stage. And, you know, you don't, you have to, you grow as a performer. You uh, aren't like, well, maybe some people are, but I certainly was not um, put on the stage like on our first gig and I was rocking it, you know? I was mostly just like, oh shit. <laughs> just work, just focus on the song and that was it. The vocal sound that came about in the first independent album was something that uh, came out of insecurity to actually being a woman in metal not being aggressive enough and I thought that I needed grit in my voice. I thought that I needed to have some sort of aggression to bring to the table that I didn't believe I had inside me and so I tried to change my voice. Ultimately it felt like the, it just became less and less because I couldn't vocally do it. It was, it was hurting too much uh, as we were touring and also um, I noticed that uh, a lot more people were, were responding positively when I was, uh, as I was becoming more in my own shoes. It was even surprising for me sometimes when we were working on the new album when I could work with like the lower register and I realized how strong it actually was becoming. We asked Colby Page about the connection between the band and the Canmore Hotel. I grew up. Uh, kind of half and half in Calgary and Canmore. So Canmore has been a huge part of my life um, the whole way through. Uh, I used to um, train up there like athletically like uh, the whole time I was growing up and just spend so much time in the mountains uh, that it kind of almost seems like, like when we play in the Canmore Hotel there's a lot of people that look to it as we are actually coming home to our hometown which is really interesting because Calgary is a hometown, but Canmore in a way is as well because it's a hometown for me. And um, so when we play at the Canmore Hotel, uh, yeah, it's just it's just special. They have a lot of pride, I guess. In uh, it's like that rooting for your your city, your people thing. The song "The Wicker Man" has become an anthem at the Canmore Hotel for Cobra and the Lotus. We asked Cobra if there was a specific reason why this song was chosen. No, there's no specific reason at all, actually. We just played it the first time, and because so many people recognized it, uh, we love the song, and uh, we just thought this is going to be the Canmore song. So if it just kind of stuck from then on, and um, the best part about that song is that people don't need to know the words, even if they haven't heard it. They, they can catch on to the woes, you know, like that's something they can tackle. So it just, it's another way to interact with everyone and that venue is just so fun to interact with because you can just count on the crowd being into it. Cobra told us about something that happened to her during one of the shows at the Cadmore Hotel. I even have a permanent mark from playing in the Cadmore Hotel. It's branded on me for life. Fog machine went right through my pants uh, last time we played there. Um, not this last one, but just over a year ago, and uh, it was of steam, 
burn, so it didn't wreck my pants, but my pants were stuck to my third degree burn. It was like a horrible burn through my pants and then I had to rip my pants off when I finished playing the show and it took all the like burnt skin with it and now I have this permanent scar on my leg to, remem to remind me of our awesome times at the Camera Hotel. <laughs> Well, that's it for our first installment on our EMTV special on Cobra and the Lotus. Stay tuned for part two. Until then, keep it metal.